Each hole is connected to a pipe. One pipe, the one we just changed, leads to the fish tank, the other to a box where the lava can pupate and turn into flies. Here the Today's mission, composter module plumbing. The plumbing connecting the aquaponic compost module to the fish tank needs to be changed. Reroute the pipes to reduce complexity and increase access. Tip, the hose can be connected later. Okay, let's see. In the last episode, Conrad filled the tank with tap water, creating a vortex. Today we need to reroute the plumbing. I explain why shortly. For this we probably need the electrical screwdriver again, because we need to remove the current plumbing from its holders. This will be the first episode about the aquaponics composter model, which is basically a sub-series of the aquaponics system, and still in the experimental stage. The composter houses black soda flies and the larvae, as well as red wiggler compost worms. Let's go! So the water from the vortex seen in the previous episode was flowing in this piece of pipe, which connected the composter model to the fish tank. Black soldier fly larvae fall into the pipes once they leave the compost and harvest themselves. The dead flies also end up in the plumbing. The stream of water flowing through the pipes collects the larvae and flies and transports them into the fish tank, where the fish rapidly consume them. The old pipe was blocking the access to the filter tank and the larvae also could escape where the hose was attached which is why the plumbing needs to be changed. Let's first remove the screws of the pipe clamps and also the cable ties which hold the pipe into place. I first thought I will raise the composter model, but this would have made changes at the fly cage necessary as well and uh, hence would have been more work. So I found a solution with the composter staying at its place. Next, I just disconnect the T-joint fittings from the connector to the fly cage and from the GOT module. Here the T-joint is glued in place with hot glue, which makes it a bit more difficult to remove. The complexity of the pipes can definitely be reduced here. By comparing the before and after, the entire pipe along the IBC frame is eliminated. The access to the filter tank is much better this way, and we need to connect the pipe to the IBC now. To achieve this, I just cut a piece of pipe to the desired length. It is just a standard DIN 5 PVC pipe and can be cut with any kind of saw. I previously used the band saw of our space, but it's currently out of order. This hand saw works just as fine. The debris can be removed with the cutter to create a smooth edge and prevent plastic debris from entering the system's waterways. Let's put this piece into its place. It can easily be pushed into the connectors and it fits perfectly. Once the pipe clamps are tightened, this part is finalized for now. The vortex hose will be attached to the end cap connecting the T-joint of the god module at some point. The god module is just a plastic tray with two holes. The larvae will crawl via the ramps out of the compost and fall into this tray, harvesting themselves. They can crawl into the tray and fall into one of two holes. Each hole is connected to a pipe. One pipe, the one we just changed, leads to the fish tank, the other to a box where the larva can pupate and turn into flies. The larvae are very wet when exiting the compost and therefore can stick to almost any surface, even climbing vertical walls. Uh, they do not stick to fly net though, which acts as a barrier to keep the larvae on the plastic tray. Like I mentioned earlier, the T-joint fitting is connected to the tray with hot glue. To reduce the force on the glue, there is also a cable tie holding the fitting in place. The previous drilling hole in the neck of the T-joint cannot be used again. Another hole needs to be drilled since it's now facing the other direction. The hole can be drilled with a wood drill bit. I removed the seal ring for the drilling so it will not be damaged and can be reassembled once the hole is created. The seal here is optional, but it covers the recess in the fitting, which otherwise could be a place for lava to get stuck in. The previous hole is sealed with hot glue to prevent larvae from escaping. In general, life always finds a way and I'm always impressed where the larva escapes through. I think this is actually a good trait for the black soldier fly. It will help this species survive, but if you want to have the larvae and flies contained in a confined space, it can get difficult. There are usually many flies and larvae, and even if it's less than 1% who escape successfully, it still can be quite a lot of individuals. 
A new cable tie tightens the fitting and hot glue is also applied to the cable tie. Hot glue helps limiting the crevices and sealing the T-joint to the tray. I will repair the fly net here in a follow-up episode. But first the plumbing for the pupate box will need to be changed too. This will probably be the next mission. In case you are wondering what the brown substance here is, it is dried residue from the compost, which the larvae leaves behind while crawling off. This concludes today's mission. Subscribe for the next episode and leave some feedback in the comments below. You could also check out this video. Or if it's your birthday, maybe this one. Here,